welcome. So as you can tell, it is almost Christmas. I have my Christmas set up in the background, got my stocking for Hazel, got my stocking. And so because it's almost Christmas, I got a pre-Christmas gift so I can utilize it early. I don't know about you, but sometimes you just need that gift before Christmas because you're like, it'll be utilized well before Christmas. Anyway, this year that gift for me was the Apple Watch. So for full transparency, this is not my first Apple Watch. This is the Apple Watch Series 8. I previously about a year and a half ago had the Series 7 and I only had that for about a year. The Apple Watch for about a year and I am not really sure what happened to it. It just kind of broke and it needed to be replaced and the cost of replacing it was like almost the same price as like a new Apple Watch. So I just like cried a little bit and then decided not to get one. Anyway, so I got a new one because I, after a year of going without it, I just really wanted a new one. So I've been running a lot more. So I felt like the Apple Watch was pretty useful. And so I was just like, I got it a week ago and I was on the treadmill recently and I was looking down at my Apple Watch and then looking at the actual treadmill like what it was recording and there was a huge discrepancy and I was kind of curious and like why there was such a difference and then it got me thinking how accurate is the Apple Watch really? So for this video, I wanted to test the accuracy of the Apple Watch, but first I wanna go over what I found online when I did a quick Google search of how accurate the Apple Watch is according to these sources online. So based on some of the information I saw, the Apple Watch 8 got through an FDA test, which means that the FDA said it was accurate enough to be put onto the marketplace in terms of what it claimed to do, in terms of like tracking calories and tracking heart rate. It was accurate enough for the FDA to give it a seal of approval to move on to the open market. So starting with the heart rate, Rate. The Apple Watch tracks a heart rate using a, and I'm going to butcher this, so just bear with me, a photoflemmographer, from flemmography? A photoflemmography. Anyway, the pronunciation aside, what it basically means is that the Apple Watch is using light to track your heart rate. According to what I saw online, and I'm going to read it directly from here because I don't feel like butchering it, and this is from the screen rant. So your blood is red, and so it reflects red light and absorbs green light. Thereby, the Apple Watch uses green light to see how much is being absorbed by your blood, which theoretically correlates to your heart rate and how fast your blood is moving through you and things like that that and it can be used to track the fluctuations in your heart rate. If you like look very closely when the Apple Watch is pressed against your skin you can kind of tell if you're an Apple Watch owner that there's like a light that goes on especially when you're working out and I've always wondered what that is and then looking it up I was like oh yeah that kind of makes sense. So there's a light that it uses to try to accurately detect your heart rate. Obviously this is not a hundred percent there are some fluctuations in that and there's ways that you can kind of make it more accurate but that's just the way that it goes about testing your heart rate. And I feel like the technology has really advanced pretty far. It can register up to 210 beats per minute of your heart rate. And this is something that's a really cool feature of the Apple Watch. Um, it can detect your heart rate and it can be useful for people who need that constant kind of update on what their heart rate is. So that light is one of the ways that it can track your heart rate. It can also track it apparently through the digital crown on the side. You can see that digital crown if you press your hand up against it or your finger up against it, it can apparently register your heart rate. Now, like I said, the accuracy differs person to person in terms of heart rate. So I'll get into it at the end, but there are some ways that you can make your Apple Watch more accurate, but this is just one of the ways that it actually tries to record your heart rate. So something else I'm interested in with this video is to look at the actual calories that you expend according to the Apple Watch. So if you're an Apple Watch user, you know that there's an app on your phone that also tracks your daily expenditures and and it shows you like your active and your actual resting throughout the day daily total expenditures. And that's really interesting to me. Obviously there is like calculations you can do for your basal metabolic rate that are like accurate to your like weight, height, age, things like that. But it's not as specific as like what your actual metabolism is. So in theory, the total daily expenditure that the Apple Watch says should be more accurate because it has more features. It has a better way of gauging like your heart rate and your exercise and things like that. So we've got those two, the heart rate and the caloric intake. Those are two things I can actually track with other devices. And that's what I really wanted to do is see how accurate are the Apple Watches compared to other devices that also track similar things. So for this video, we're going to be comparing an outdoor run 
a Orange Theory workout, and then an indoor run. So I just chose these three activities because they're things I usually do. I'm sorry that they're very cardio heavy. It's just easy to compare them. So let's get into how the Apple Watch compared and what my experience was with these three workouts and comparing the accuracy of the Apple Watch to these other devices. So before I actually get into the video, I just wanted to show you an overview of what my Apple Watch looks like. Like I said, I have the Series 8, and here's just a little bit of what it looks like on the wrist and the face of it. So, okay, now let's get into it. Okay, gonna go running with the Apple Watch and then gonna compare it to a Map My Run app on my iPhone. So I usually know approximately how far I'm going, like for instance, the distance between where my apartment is and specific landmarks. So it'll be interesting to compare how far the distance on the watch registers, which is it's theoretically better because it has GPS enabled location tracking. So we'll see. Okay, so when I first opened Map My Run, it also tried to open a application similar to it on my Apple Watch. It looked kind of like this, and I didn't use it, but it's something cool to know about the Apple Watch and the Map My Run feature. So I just got to two miles and it's like off by like 0 0.02, but it like caught up. It was like at one mile, it was like off by like 0.3 to 0.5, but now it's like, it's caught up a little bit. But I just kind of like think that that's probably due to like the, the way that I tap it. So it's pretty close, pretty good. So the only real difference I see is, um, between like the times and I, I like want to look more into that but like the Apple Watch has me going significantly faster than the Matt and I run which is interesting. Okay I'm back now from the run. Overall I feel like they really did catch up with each other at the end like when it hit five miles they both kind of hit it at the exact same time so it wasn't like it was weird. Sometimes the distance would be off by like 0.2 to 0.5, but like, or sorry, 0.02 to 0.05, but like it wasn't off for that much. I think the biggest difference was the pace. So let me look at what the actual paces ended up being. So like I kind of suspected while I was on the run, the time, like the splits were incredibly different. So taking a look at like what the actual map my run said it said that like on the app for map my run it said the average pace was like a 903 which makes kind of like sense for how it was tracking me but then on the apple watch app but not it was like the map my run but on the apple watch app i'll pop it up on screen it said that uh like my average pace was about 11 minutes per mile which is like pretty different i don't know how it tracked that but then in terms of the apple watch it got me at like 8 44 um which is like kind of how i felt running and it gave me like splits every single split and stuff and you can do that on my, my run but it's just like very different. And that's how I observed it as well. Like it was very different paces. What I think was happening is that the Apple Watch, since it's on your wrist, does a better job tracking how fast you're actually moving versus like the phone application has a bit of a hard time kind of tracking you, especially I've noticed sometimes when you're on a, when you're on like a trail that's out in the middle of nowhere, kind of has a hard time figuring out where you are. That might account for some of the differences between the Apple Watch, but it, it really is just like, because it's more advanced technology, because it just feels like it tracks you better and like tracks your paces better, shows up better. So I think that in terms of this round, I think the Apple Watch wins. I think that this is superior when it comes to outdoor runs, especially when you have to do a lot of stops. 
Okay, so I totally forgot to film an intro because I was watching the World Cup, but this test is going to be between the O2 Beat and the Apple Watch. And obviously I can't film inside of an Orange Theory class because that is forbidden. So all of these are going to be dramatic recreations and clips that I filmed that basically represent what you would do within an Orange Theory workout. So just letting you know. So my thoughts on the O2B versus the Apple Watch was that during the class, it took a little while for the Apple Watch to start calibrating to my heart rate and kind of figuring out where my heart rate was, what I was actually doing. For this workout, I used the HIT workout function that was on my Apple Watch to try to track my calories and my progress. I also used the zone function on the Apple Watch. So let me explain what the zone function is before going any further. So I want to show you what I'm talking about when I talk about the zones. So give me one second. So if I were to like open this high intensity interval training. So if I open this and it's obviously like getting ready, I'll just show you quickly. Hi, I know, I know. Um, I'll show you quickly like the zone. So this is what I mean by zone. It's kind of closely linked to what it looks like in Orange Theory. It'd be interesting. I mean, obviously heart rate zones are not a new concept, but the coloring is the exact same as Orange Theory. And so I was looking at this constantly throughout my workout and it was like pretty consistent that they were in the same zone. So as I mentioned, I felt like the zones were pretty similar and I felt like I was in the same zones at the same time. I feel like the Apple Watch, it was just kind of like I was, there was more stability. I was in the zones longer, except my O2B just suddenly gave out with the floor, which was something interesting. I feel like the Apple Watch did a better job of tracking where it was at on the floor versus the O2B. Like the O2B just had a really hard time and it might just be because it's old, but it has a hard time kind of tracking your movements on the floor when you're not doing like a cardio intensive workout, whereas the Apple Watch was consistent and gave me updates on my heart rate throughout the floor exercise, and it was in a, like the gray zone, but it made sense. Anyway, I feel like the Apple Watch did a far superior job with the floor and also the, the treadmill in the rower, even though I feel like it doesn't know my max heart rate quite as well as the O2B does, because the O2B is constantly calibrated, or supposedly is, by the Orange Theory. However, I feel like in this case, the Apple Watch also run this round because it gave me more more detailed information on all three of the stations during the workout. So I need to tape up my feet before I go running now because my feet are nasty, disgusting, and the worst thing ever. And I found that taping them up or putting like a liquid bandage on them helps. But while I do that, I want to describe what this last test is. So I'm going to be using the Apple Watch and comparing it to a treadmill. So there was a few things I wanted to test out with this round in terms of like what I wanted to measure. So the first one was a distance. So I began by just walking and warming up and I was very astonished at first that like the Apple Watch was already immediately behind. It was like well behind what the treadmill said. And so I was like, okay, maybe this will just like all come out in the wash as I start running. But it just got worse as I started running. It was off by a significant margin and it just kept getting off. It was like, as I kept running, it just get got worse and worse and worse and so I just realized that the distance on the treadmill was like completely not reflected on the Apple Watch and that was a really interesting part of it. Additionally something I wanted to measure was the heart rate and so I know that this treadmill and some treadmills have like a heart rate monitor and that was pretty even when I tried doing it while running and also while walking the heart rate was the same on the treadmill as it was on the Apple Watch so that was pretty accurate. It was with the distance that was a complete difference and I was really let down by the Apple Watch and it might have something to do with the the calibration that I have on it, but it was just completely off. To highlight my point, I ran on the treadmill until I got to three miles on my Apple Watch. And when I got to that, the treadmill was recording my distance as like 3.4. So it was off by 0.4 of a mile, which is a huge difference. And it just would get worse with the distance. So I was really let down. I do not feel like the functionality is the greatest on the Apple Watch. So just, I don't know, I was really let down. <laughs> 
So let's get into my experience with the Apple Watch and seeing how accurate it truly is when compared to other devices that track the exact same things. So as a disclaimer, this is not a perfect experiment because the devices that I'm comparing it to can be inaccurate in and of themselves. This is just kind of trying to compare them to something that someone might use if they don't have an Apple Watch versus what the Apple Watch says. So take it all with a grain of salt, I guess. So overall, I feel like the Apple Watch stacked up a lot better than I thought it would. I think that you always have to take everything with a grain of salt and maybe more than a grain, maybe a pinch, maybe a handful, because it is an estimate. That's what it likes to say on the website and all the material I read was that like, it's an estimate. It is not an exact science. It just estimates your caloric output and things like that and your heart rate. It's all just like within a certain range. So I feel like it was pretty good for what it said it its estimates were and I was really happy with it what it did but in conclusion I think it's just really important to understand again the key and operative word is it is an estimate it is a range it is not a hundred percent perfect it is something to kind of use as a guideline if you're trying to lose weight if that's your goal or if you're just trying to move and be active I would just say treat it like a guideline don't treat it as an absolute that's the most important key message, but I feel like in general, it is pretty accurate and it's a really good device for tracking your workouts. And there's so many other things about it that make it a useful device. In terms of improving accuracy, there are a few things that I saw online. One, to make sure that it is accurately calibrated at all times and updated and that you have wrist detection enabled so it can accurately monitor your, your heart rate on your wrist. Additionally, a second thing is to make sure you choose the right workout so it can accurately capture your calories burned and reflect the the actual workout correctly. Three, and the most important, is make sure that it's on your wrist securely, but not so tight that it's restricting any kind of blood flow. And something interesting to note is that tattoos and other things on your wrist can actually interfere with the accuracy of the Apple Watch. So it's just something to note that the wrist placement of your Apple Watch and the secureness of it on your wrist is actually very important to make sure it's as accurate as possible. So in the end, I don't need to plug Apple. Apple is a huge multi-billion dollar company and I feel like it doesn't need any more recognition, but I feel like it does make a good product if you're looking for a device to track your workouts. There's so many out there, but this product I feel like does a really good job and is reliable and trustworthy. So if you are an Apple user, please let me know how you feel about your Apple Watch. If you feel like it's an accurate representation of your workouts, if you use it for your workouts, what you use it for, for anything like that but I will continue using it obviously and I really like it and yeah that is all I have for you today I hope you enjoy and I hope I'll see you next time